Hello everyone, this is Josef Not here, and today I would like to create a short video about tips that I found very helpful when I set up a case for OpenFoam under Windows 10 with the newly released feature Bash on Ubuntu on Windows. I already created a video how you can install Bash on Ubuntu on Windows and OpenFoam within that Bash. But uh, I would like to give you a couple of tips. Now I did that video in, within a virtual box, but now I would like to show you some tips on my personal laptop at home that I find to be very useful. The main question that you have to ask yourself and the decision that you have to make is, do you want to pre and post process your results within the Linux framework of this bash on Ubuntu on Windows, or do you want to do it with the Windows applications? So do you want to use Linux applications or Windows applications? And there are pros and cons. For example, you can install, for example, Paraview or Gedit or even Blender if you're using it for pre-processing or post-processing, and you can run all these applications from the bash as a Ubuntu version. The problem is that there is no X server out of the box with the bash, so you have to install an additional software in Windows, which then serves as an X server. I'm going to show you how to do that. But I found that the graphics are not the best, but with this approach, you have access both to the Linux files, because you are in the bash and you can open up with the Linux Paraview version uh, uh, open form simulations that you run in, uh, in the Linux file system and you have also access to the Windows files. On the other hand, if you uh, decide to install native versions of Paraview, for example, or Blender, or you can even install Gedit for Windows, and then you have the native versions of these applications, but you have only access to the Windows file. So in this case, if you decide to run Windows native applications, then you have to run or copy your simulation results onto the Windows file system for pre and post processing. But it is possible to start Windows executables from this bash on Ubuntu on Windows, which I find to be very, very cool. So these are the points. And now I want, want to show you this, um, what this really means. So if I go maybe to, to bash on Ubuntu on Windows here, and I start it. What do I find now? I would like to show you my bash RC. What I found to be very helpful and maybe you already found this out yourself, maybe not. Let's wait for open form open to reload and now bash RC. And as you see, I have, I'm sourcing open form and for the X server, I'm exporting display is equal zero. And what I want to show you are these three aliases. So what I did here, I created an alias called gedit, which then points to a Windows executable. And gedit then will start the Windows version of gedit. But exactly like that, I created an alias for Paraview, which then starts a Paraview 5.4.1 which is installed in my program files uh, directory in Windows, in C. I also have a Paraview Linux, the version 4.3, so we can distinguish the Windows and the uh, uh, Linux version, and this is in my home. Now, what did I do? I went to paraview.org, and I downloaded here, if I click on download, I download, you can choose here all the ver available versions of Paraview. I chose the latest version and 4.3. And here I downloaded 5.4 uh, for the win for Windows. And I also downloaded 4.3 for Linux. And what I did, I just uh, started the executable, installed Paraview on Windows, and I copied the Linux star file and extracted it in my home. And I created exactly this alias for this path. 
Now let's see what that does. So if I start gedit, this should now open up the Windows version of gedit. Exactly. And you can download this from, if you Google gedit for Windows, you can download it very easily. The same can be done for Paraview. If I type in Paraview, let's wait for Paraview to load. This will now open up the native installation of Paraview 5.4.1, exactly like we wanted. But now if I want to run Linux, the Linux version of Paraview, we need an X server. If we started Linux like that, then we would get an error message. Let's wait for this error message. Exactly, we cannot connect to the X server. This is the error message, but if you install Xming, if you download Xming X server for Windows and install it, I have a shortcut here, but you can mo you will most probably find it here, X Xming. And if you start this, this will start here in the bottom, a background process, uh, X server. And now if I go back, no, I cannot go back. I If I now open bash on Ubuntu on Windows, I click here. And maybe if I open up my bash RC, so I started Xming in Windows and then I export display equals zero. That way, let's wait. And now in the bottom here, export display. If you enter this into your bash RC, then now we should be able bar of view. Linux and now this should open up Paraview version 4.3.1 for Linux. Let's wait a little bit for Paraview to load. And here you see it already loaded with the Xming icon and there you go. This is Paraview version 4.3.1 with the Linux commands. And the main point here is that now here you can access both your Linux file, your Linux home, and you can also go, go for in slash mnt for C for your Windows files, which you cannot access, which you can also access with the Windows version, but you cannot access your uh, Linux file system, your Linux home with the Windows versions. So you have to decide which one do you want to use. This X server version and the Linux applications or the Windows applications and you have to copy your open form files onto your Windows file system. These were the points I wanted to talk to you about, but there is one more point that I found to be very, very handy. As you see, I created here an icon I just copied this bash on Ubuntu on Windows icon onto my desktop and I changed the icon to the open form icon and I renamed it to open form. So I have a, an icon where I can just click and now we can open up open form. Of course, it's not an open form software. It is the bash where I have open form available, but I think this is still rather cool. The point that I want to mention here that in Windows, you can assign um, keyboard combinations. And what I did, I assigned this icon to be Control Alt T, which is the keyboard combination in Ubuntu for the terminal. So if I press now Control Alt T, now I open up the bash, just like I would do it with the terminal in Ubuntu, which is very handy. I did the same, for example, for the Paravi version of uh, Windows. And if I press now Control Alt P for Paraview, now this opens up Paraview for Windows. And I also did that for Control Alt G for gedit, and this opens up gedit, which is very handy uh, keyboard combination for me at least. These were the tips I wanted to show you. 
I hope that you can use some of these tips and you found them helpful. With that, I would like to thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you next time.